and the motivation. Says, like how the bad do we want it, boys? We want to show that we want it more bad than it. How bad do we want it, boys? Tighten up D, boys. And Hunter goes, ready up. <laughs> yeah, he does yeah, every time. <laughs> what is a wog? What is Should a wog? It's like Greek. Uh, it's like really hairy white people. Like, oh, they're I mean, not they're like usually, white. White. They're usually hairy. Like somewhat tan. They're not, they're they're like, not white. They, they are like, white. Like bro, I'll fuck you up, bro. Those type of people. Like they're not like white. a Chad. No, no like, uh, bro. Like how do you? They're uh, a Chad Wog. Watch someone. Have you said? Oh, if they watch Super Wog, they'll kind of get it. Super Wog kind of like describes it. No, they wouldn't have watched. That's an Australian thing. If you want to go on your own time later, watch this guy called Super Wog. Italians are Wogs. Uh, all I'm, I'm a Wog then. Mm, but you're from America. I might not look like one, but you're I'm, a, Amer- you're I'm only a hundred percent. No, you have to be from there. Like you have to be born. Oh, like there. in like in Italy. Well, I mean, you're American, so like you're just not a Wog. You're just whitewashed. <laughs> yeah, you have <laughs> you have <laughs> whitewashed. <laughs> what? Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, we're never not. Um, uh, no, what is the uh, Australian dead. thing you were talking about at Joe's last night? It was like a sand, uh, a sandwich, or you cook a sausage. What was that called? A oh, snag. A snag. Do you know what a snag is? No, I don't know what a snag is. It's like simple, but it's nice. It's good. Is okay, so you guys are saying that everything with a bun is a sandwich, or no, a burger. Every yeah, every a bun is a burger. Like you could have any like turkey. A turkey oh, and cheese is, is a burger. On? Uh, bun, never, chicken, bun is a burger. I've never seen a turkey burger in my life, to be honest, but I don't know. Yeah, you don't want to. Turkey's I feel like turkey's... Disgusting. Turkey's no, like... Eddie you, Eddie, you only eat it for a reason. Yeah. Okay, you didn't choose it. The turkey life did not choose you. And you didn't choose it. <laughs> the turkey, you chose the turkey life. To be fair, yes, we all had no, the Eddie, Z, man. Eddie, had to, Eddie cut out um, like red meats to help with his migraines. So, like, he eats turkey and fish and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I w- you, not, you said we all tried the Z-Man crazy, last right? I want to I want to talk about that. Oh, that Z-Man was. We all had a normal <laughs> Z-Man. Crazy. And then he had he had one with chicken, a sad-looking chicken Z-Man. When we all had this, like... <laughs> no, no, it actually it actually nah, looked it, really it, good. It, I'm it not going to lie. Nah, it, it actually looked really good. You could tell it was never going to be that good. Damn. See, they're talking <laughs> crazy now. I was, I was being respectful about it. Like... Because it's not crazy. Right, it's, chicken, not, it's not going to be bad. The chicken Z-Man looked good. It looks like hey. Come on, would you rather a beef or a chicken? Oh, well, I mean, the brisket, brisket was, I mean. like, pretty good. But honestly, I think the chicken one would be good, too. Like, if... I don't think I'm missing, missing out. I think I'm happy with my... I think I'm missing out on nothing. How do you live in America and you can't eat burgers? Damn. <laughs> no, that's not a flat. That's that's, that's, Dude, I was being totally on. respectful. No, no, like, no. What about... I don't know if this is going to be put on the podcast. Do you guys, like, own guns? Like... I do not. Didn't you say you own one for self You own one, Eddie? I do not. I think Reed said that. Oh, what? yeah. He does. does anyone here own a gun? That's crazy. You mean this, right? No. If they did, they're I not going to say yes. No, I know Reed. No, I know <laughs> That's Reed. not a bad thing to say you own a gun. Yeah, no, Reed, but some Reed people does. just don't want other people to know they have a gun. I know Reed owns one. I know. Yeah. He, t- he told me, like, at utmost confidence. He's like, oh, yeah, I own a pistol. Bro, last night I stayed with Reed and, <laughs> and I sleep. I slept on his couch and there's like, he has like a patio door right by the couch and I was like, Reed. You got my trade if someone comes in this door? He's like, hold on just a second. And then he, like, comes back out. He's like, bro, I got you. And I'm like, oh, my God. I wasn't asking I for mean, that. But most people in Kansas City probably have guns. I mean, there's a lot of hunting here. Oh, well, that's the, definitely. I yeah. mean, well, yeah, and I'm in Texas, so, like, literally everybody has a gun in Texas. Yeah. Do you reckon over 50% of the population? Uh, probably, yeah, like, I would say. I would say, like, a hunting rifle counts. Yeah, like. I got a hunting rifle. That's just because I go with my grandpa. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're, because, I mean. It's so common here. Like it's not as common in PA unless you're in like the middle of PA. But I mean, everybody hunts in Texas. And yeah, in the Midwest, yeah. it's pretty common too. Yeah. Yeah. Hunting rifles are like decently common in Australia. Like I know a few people that they just like, like hunt these and shit. But that's like yeah, that. Well, I want to talk. Spiders. You guys mentioned you sent a video of a squirrel. Like, why is a squirrel so weird when I you guys s- have like kangaroos and shit? Bro, do they exist? I swear, I've never seen a squirrel. Like, a, like in movies and stuff like that, you see squirrel, squirrels and stuff, like, on, like, are just around. And it's just weird to see one in real life because they're kind of goofy. Like, they just kind of, like, hop around <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, no, they're, they're weird. Bit, they're they don't. They're a bit weird. Like, I don't know. I've never, like, I swear they don't exist in Australia. Maybe we just haven't seen yeah. them. But I swear that's the first time I look outside the house and I see this little thing with a tail. I'm like, what the hell are you? And it's just like, and, I, <laughs> and it was, like, crawling into our roof. And I'm like, I've never yeah. seen that before. But you guys do have kangaroos. It's not just a stereotype. No, no we do. Yeah. Like, they're not, like, people think they're hopping out backyards. It's not like that. Like, they're like deer here. Have you guys yeah. seen any deer at yeah. all? Uh, Probably uh, not. Nah, nah. They're not like super common, but but like if you see one like on like the road or something, like just hopping, like you're gonna oh it's a kangaroo. You're not gonna be like oh, what is that? Yeah, it's just like a kangaroo. Do you guys have other wild animals at all? Oh yeah, 
Yeah, just oh, like. Like, what do you mean, like, wild? Like, just, like, in the, you know, like, if you're driving down the highway. Because, like, here, you see cows, deer. Oh, yeah, we have cows. Like, uh, what, I mean, horses. If you go, like, really, but we used to drive to this place, like, eight hours away from our house. We used to go through, like, this really, like, country area. And there was, like, the pigs with, like, the tusks. I oh, uh, boars. I think, well, I saw, like, I don't know, I feel them. And, but the, you see, like, a lot of dingoes, I think. Yeah, dingoes. There's yeah. there's a few dingoes, but that's like I don't know what that is. It's like a it's like a dog. It's like a wolf. Oh yeah, oh, it's okay. like a dog. It's like yeah. a wo- it's like okay. a wolf dog. I actually, do like that's like the only yeah. besides kangaroos. I've only seen like two of those in my life, but that's like pretty yeah. much it. Kangaroos okay. like our roadkill. Like you have deer roadkill. Like where a car you see a kangaroo on the side of yeah, dead on the side see, of the you road. You just see a casual. That's crazy. Kangaroo Wait, really? But they just die. They're pretty stupid. Like that's kinda sad. they're stupid, but they're buff. Like oh, yeah, no. you would not go near them. No. <laughs> Especially a big. There's like there's a thing called a wallaby, which is like a kangaroo. I've heard of that before. But but it's but. not as big. I don't know. I don't know the difference, but they they're nowhere near as big as a kangaroo. Like some of these kangaroos are like six foot. Like oh oh no, they're massive. Yeah. What about you guys? Have this thing called was that a cassowary? Isn't that thing like freakishly big or like what some is it? a cassowary? That's where that's what we have. We have a cassowary. I've yes. I was gonna say it. I don't. I've never heard. I literally of it. have never seen a cassowary. It's a bird. I've seen it on like the internet oh, and shit. Oh, humans. the one with like the crazy long t- like claws. Like yeah. Yeah, no, I've seen these things. I'm like, what the hell? Oh is my that? god, I know what you're talking about now. They look like, had, like prehistoric. Hostages. Yeah, I'm pretty we sure have... cassowaries are like an Australian like native animal. Like I didn't use all that. What? Had I literally there. have never seen one of those in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. We see. Uh, I, I think so. Now I've seen a lot of emus. Those things are pretty freakish. Yeah, when they run, they're so like. Weird. So, how far do you guys live from each other? Like, because I mean, obviously, most of us live in Kansas City. We're only about an hour away from each other, Max. Are you guys like on the, the opposite sides of the country from each no, other? Like two no, hour plane. Like, two hour plane. If you wanted to drive, hour. yeah, probably a twenty four hour drive. Twenty four uh, hour wait, drive. Wait, yeah, for a, for a two, two hour, hour flight. I think because you have to go around or something. Oh no, it's probably no like stopovers and shit. Like, if you, no, direct stopovers. What you know? The, you, you know Australia how like. Yeah, you know, you know the shape of Australia. Yeah, I kind of live up the top, but like in the middle. Oh, and he lives down the bottom. I like I'm bottom. And there's right. not like a clear direct. road like nah, 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 up to. Worry. He has to go like around the side and then like down. You to probably you. have to go certain. If you can't, just, it's not like that. It's not straight up. Uh, I think there is a road. Like, like what? That shows straight to Queensland. I, I think that is the highway. Yeah, I think so. I swear, I've never. There's got even be. then. If it's a 24 hour drive, it's got to be longer than a two hour. Like that's, that's something. My, my grandpa drove there and it took him four like, hours. Oh, like a tw- at I mean, least I think it was like 2019, and I'm pretty sure like if that was direct, I'm, there's no way he's getting there. Like that's just that is that is the crazy. Of that is like insane because 24 hours. That was my drive from Philly to Austin, and that's half of the US. That's like a 7 hour flight. 6 yeah, 6 hour six 7 hour flight. Ish, yeah. Yeah, I mean we are pretty far away. Yeah. Like, yeah. But a 2 hour flight versus a 24 hour drive is what like It's probably two and a half hour, but that doesn't make a big difference. Yeah. Oh, you know, I don't know, maybe there is a highway to straight to Queensland from where I am, but I've never I don't know there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know for sure, but I feel like there would be a highway that just goes I think there'd be some point where there's a highway, but I think like getting to the highway would be like a bit of a hustle. I don't know. So you guys have been to America before, LA, Dallas, That's just just those two so far, yeah. And then yeah. Kansas City, obviously. What um, you know, like what is the biggest difference you think between those big cities that you've been to and then Kansas City? Because like James made a good point about this last night, but I want to hear your guys' opinions first, and then just like you know, because we talked about a little bit in line at Joe's also how LA is just so busy all the time. You know, Kansas City has a little bit of that, but not really. Yeah. Like, what else is it about Kansas City that's just different or that you guys have noticed? Um, the culture. The people here will, like, literally kill you if you say anything bad about, like... <laughs> oh, yeah, he was talking like, about how prideful everybody these is people, about Kansas like, City. They're the definition <laughs> of die on this hill. Like, these... <laughs> for, for, what? I, for, the, for Kansas, like... If for you, everything. If you talk... For we're, Missouri. We're pri- yeah, we're like, prideful. Whichever one you're in. We're in I Missouri still, right I now. I still don't yeah. really... Yeah, it gets so confusing. But, uh, the people here are a lot more, like down to earth compared to LA. Like LA, like, was all staying in like a pretty decent area and it was like kind of like, you know, a lot of people that like kind of like full of themselves were around us and it was like, I don't know, it just didn't feel like, felt like everyone was just doing their own thing way too quickly and they'd like push through you and like it just didn't feel like, I don't know, they feel like humans. Here it's like the people like in the line at Joe, some guy like, I asked him like how long's the wait to him and he's like, oh, it's 30 minutes and I'm like, no way. And we had a bit of a laugh and that was it. So it was like, I don't know, it's just like easier to get along with People that are more down to earth. LA just seems like rich people center. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. 
definitely LA is more of a holiday. You go there for a holiday, whereas Kansas City is more livable. Like people live, like it's more of a livable city, whereas LA is just very like holiday, like land of the celebrities and stuff like yeah. that. And then obviously, James, you have a little bit of a different experience. Like you lived in Philly and now in Austin. And like you said something last night on the way there, it was like, you know, you can see how this city is kind of like on the rise. It's not quite there yet. And I think, I mean, obviously when like, I think it was the Eagles won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. That parade was massive, and people were comparing those two on Twitter um, since the Chiefs won this year. But it's like, you know, I, I could see a future where, where Kansas City is like that, you know, maybe five to ten years out. I mean, like Philly? Nah. But, like, you know, maybe some other cities, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, Philly, I mean, now, I'm joking, obviously. I'm, I'm prideful about Philly. But Philly has the advantage that, like, well, one, it's on the. It's like kind of near a coast. It's also got the size advantage, the population advantage. Like, yeah. Um, but Kansas City definitely feels like in five to ten years. I mean, you're seeing it literally around this arena. I know people that watch. I don't know if they know where the arena is. Um, but you know, we were talking about how they're putting shops on the bridge out there, all that. Like, there's just there's so much room as well to grow. Here. Yeah. Like I, I was driving around and there's a lot of open space. Kind of like what Austin looks like now and why Austin's growing so much is you have businesses going there. The, the weather's nice, obviously, but you have room to grow, you know? Yeah. Philly does not really have room to grow. It is a – it almost – it's it's closer to New York, in my opinion, than any other city, like, or, or Chicago. So, yeah. Um, but, I mean, yeah, regardless, like, I, I just want to touch real quick on the culture here. It's, it's pretty awesome, you know? That's, I think, something I love about Philly is – we we are prideful as well, and we have that Philly culture. We have you know we have our food. We have our our our, our kind of you know I don't know peculiarities, and I yeah. feel like Kansas has that as well, or Kansas City. Um, so yeah, I like that a lot. I think I think it's pretty cool, and I like the banter as well. Between yeah, that, yeah. Between people, because it's not it's not deep. You know, people are nice here. So have you seen the uh, Sylvester Stallone statue in person? Oh, I mean, yeah, dude. Definitely, yeah. I'm, that's like on my list. I'm a huge, really? like, yeah. I'm a Rocky fan. Oh, I, nice. I love the Rocky movies, so like, I want to see that in person. Yeah, it's like right dope. on the edge of the city, like pretty much one of the one of the busiest roads to get into the city. It's like right on the right. It, yeah, that's dope. It, right in front of the museum. So yeah, I've definitely seen it before. What's the population there? It's like two in Philly. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I mean, okay. I, I I have no idea. Someone could look it up real quick. Can, Kansas yeah. City's Kansas City's like 500k. Yeah, and that's Austin. Pretty, Austin's that's pretty small. small. Or like, like uh, sur- and surrounding areas. Yeah, still pretty, yeah but if you're including proper, like, I mean, any any place would be like massively bigger, right? Because there's so suburbs. Like Philly is 1.6 million. <laughs> that's not, that sounds accurate, I think. Yeah, but that's yeah. just in the city, though. How like, big is is Kansas? Like a pretty big city, or Kansas City? Yeah, like how? I mean, it's pretty. I'd say it's like average. I mean. Chicago, way. I don't know. I've been around to quite a few cities. I would say Kansas City is really, really small. Like it's it's really, really but for like surrounding areas, like I'm, I live in a town that's an hour away. Like everything else here is like hundred thousand people or less. So it's like it makes Kansas City feel a lot bigger than it is. Kansas City population is like a little bit over five hundred thousand, five twenty two. Yeah. What what does the uh, Kansas City proper mean? That I was I was gonna ask what, what I was gonna ask what yeah. proper means. It's like a radius from like you know like for here it'd be like Orlando. Okay, so all the all like so the surrounding small surrounding cities, summer. yeah. I mean, I don't know what Philadelphia proper would be, but like <laughs> I all I'm saying is like that 1.6 million is like there, like it's in all the city. right yeah, there. It's like in the city. If you were to include the surrounding area, it'd be. Ludicrous. Like you said, you've been to Chicago. I've been like to, I've Chicago, been to Chicago New York, L.A., yeah. Austin, Dallas, San Antonio. Like, and let me tell you, Kansas City is definitely the smallest yeah. I've ever seen one of those. But that's a good thing in my opinion because I mean, I was just talking to someone. So obviously, I live in Austin now. I was talking to somebody in the city. That city is twenty years old. The oldest building in the city of Austin is twenty years old. That's insane. And I'm looking around. I'm like, I mean, it makes sense because all the buildings look new. But how crazy is that? Because the population's only a million. It doesn't really feel that much bigger than KC, though. It really doesn't. And that's why I feel like KC could even grow to be bigger than Austin. Like, I see all these buildings. I see all the space. I see the people. Like, why not? 
Yeah, Austin doesn't even have one sports team. I know. So <laughs> it, it's a definitely a big draw. I mean, because yeah. even, you know. Well, Dallas mm. is three hours away, though, you know. Like, it's not that. It's a drive. It's not a difficult one, but it's not one that I want to make often with the Texas drivers. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think there's definitely, like, a ton of potential with Kansas City. And you were saying, I think it was you, uh, like, just the old architecture of the buildings here. I was telling you guys about how in the West Bottoms, those massive warehouses are, um, you know, they turn them to haunted houses every Halloween, and they're super cool. And speaking of that, we did an escape room yesterday. Uh, that was, so I've done escape rooms before, but I've never done like a horror themed one and we, none of us really knew what to expect, but I, I had a lot of fun. I thought it was pretty cool. It was fun. It was super cool. Um, that guy yeah. was, so I don't know how people, like he was built for that. He yeah. was, he was bred for that job. <laughs> Some people just absolutely like freaks when it comes to that. Like they're just, bred. he was bred no, for it. It was, his, it was his calling. Bred for that is crazy. <laughs> he was, he was a little too good at that. Like he, <laughs> he didn't crack a smile at anything I said to him. So like, what's your Twitter? Like I'll sh- like shout you or something. And he didn't even crack a smile. Like not even like the slight, like anything I said to him, he just wouldn't even smile. Did he tell you his Twitter? No, he didn't end up giving He didn't break character. I mean, afterwards he broke character, but he did not break character the whole time. Yeah, no, that was. It's pretty interesting. And th- it was weird because. Um, so for, for reference, we started out in an escape room. We have to figure out some clues to unlock these other rooms. And one of the rooms was like a psych ward where this patient jumped out of his chair and he starts screaming. And then like, we calmed him down. Like if we, what was the word we had to keep repeating? Talk Jamie. About this. Ju- Jamie. 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 We talked about Jamie and then he's like calms down. And then I unlocked this like stick. I don't, it was like, I don't know. It was a, an electric stick, baton. Yeah. And then he sees it and he starts freaking out again. Like he was really good. He was a really good actor. Yeah, it was cool actually. It was really cool. I just love how scared these guys were before we started. Like I could feel how scared they were because like Banana was literally like hanging on to me like before we yeah. walked. To in. be fair, you were doing nothing. I mean, I'll say it right now. <laughs> no, I'll say I was right doing now. nothing. No, just wait. No, you and Kingston McCain. This guy was like trying to carry, but he just like wasn't. I wasn't cooking. trying no, to you, carry. I was no, just I playing think, my role. I think you played your role. What was your I role? Was just, my role was just to do whatever was needed. I would just. And what did you I didn't want to do too much. I didn't want to talk too much because we already had eight people yelling at each other at all times. We so. had you. You did the uh, right. cell phone part. Yeah, I, I, I was just <laughs> figuring out. Like I, I was grabbing the pamphlet. That yeah. We did to, like, figure yeah. Out, and I was reading it to everybody. Bro, someone counted the tiles wrong in the room, and they were writing on the phone. And then the worker, the employee, was like, "No, no, I think it's, I think it's eight. Oh no! I, yeah, I that was my fault. I, yeah. And then everyone like looked. Everyone the looked too. at him and was like, mm, "No, I think he meant eight. And I'm like. Bro, this guy is obviously trying to give us a hint. We're so yeah. shit. And he's like, obviously, like, this guy's like, oh, I think it might be two. And I'm like, it, it's two. Like, yeah. if the employee's giving yeah. us a hint, it's two. Can we talk about the fact that the guy that literally did nothing? I, I was, was going to ask, like, I don't want to, I don't want to. I don't want to. You even said it was more scary because of how scared we were. We, we made the vibes, like, scarier. Because of how scared we Thank were. But what did so you con- what did you contribute right, that's an, that's to the to the role. puzzle? <laughs> what did he contribute? There's, that's not a role. This guy also well he also that's did the an uh, underrated role. They keep saying what but, did I contribute? But as you know what this guy contributed contribute to when it's literally camera evidence. But you know what this, you know what like, this guy contributed what? to when everyone was screaming, he goes, shut up, bro, we need to listen, shut up. That's the only thing he did. That. Yes, I he did. I swear he told everyone to be quiet, won't be too loud. Oh, no, oh, no that was, was the one time because I was on the phone. Literally couldn't hear what was happening. The on only the role that you had is that you had the stones to go by yourself a lot of the places. The stones. Dude, me and Reed, literally. <laughs> the stones, me and Reed, that's crazy. <laughs> me and Reed went into a, to the room like by ourselves. Like Yeah. This. Oh, 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 that's what I was talking about. I was trying to figure out what did it say at the beginning to prompt you and Reed to go back to the other side? So the door had to lock from the other side. The Uh, the point of it, like, one of the points of the escape room was to split the group. Now, we should have taken it evenly. It should have been four and four, but no one else wanted to leave. And and we, like, we were just wasting time standing there having... We wasted a lot of time at the beginning trying to figure out It was who counted the milk as the gas can. Yeah. That wasn't really, like... Someone's Everyone's fault. gonna make mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Was but, it was, but again, it was cool. you keep saying that my role was to do nothing. When I mean, I can't even remember doing multiple different. You things. also you did the. Uh, me, look, I'm the, the one that pointed <laughs> at your roles irrelevant. The that was cubes him. at no, the I, end. Oh, yeah, no, you right. are relevant. There right. was the cubes at the end to put in the statue. Yep. You did that part, right? That is not hard, bro. You just literally chuck some cubes in the statue. I'm done. not saying it was hard. I'm just telling you what I did. I'm con- can yeah. we get an MVP. Can we give out an overall MVP? Him or Kingston? Either Nick or Kingston. It has to be. Yeah. Kingston was Kingston was going Kingston so crazy was just that like he was the, sweating. He was like the brainiac behind the whole operation, telling yeah. people what to where do and where to go. Kingston. And <laughs> Nick was doing like the dirty work. I did the dirty work. So like, there was like a we pulled this 
what was that? Uh, we pulled this thing out, and it was like a crawl space, and I had to crawl all the way down the crawl space in some in yeah, some sand. That's why he's MVP. Sand, okay. He just buffed everyone. Uh, yeah, no. I was yeah. Tell Kingston why he's MVP. Oh, congratulations. No, talking to this one, I just did a lot. Oh, okay, yeah, there you go. That's true. that's true. Okay, so why am I on the MVP? What happened? Is that not what you want? Yeah, uh, MVP of the escape room. By the way, it was your first escape room. It was my first escape room. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. Look, we got a we got a pamphlet, and we got a the little card thing to get the numbers, which you you locked in first. I knew I knew the holes meant something, but I didn't know what it meant. But then after that, I know because in every horror movie and every show, there needs to be an yeah, intel happens? person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I haven't gotten no, to that yet. Hey, I haven't gotten laughing. to that yet. <laughs> no, you know, I, no, I am. No, what? Yes. No. I, I reckon so, that's a good joke for, so, to be told. In, 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 no, every, be, dude, gonna, in no. every horror movie, there's an intel person. No one was ready to be the intel person. I also know in every horror movie, the blonde girl and the black guy die first. <laughs> so I knew if I could prove my worth by having the information... I was not going to die. Or at least <laughs> everyone that was scared enough to not be a part of it was going to protect me because I had the information. <laughs> I made myself valuable. That's, That's what you so have to fun. do in life. We No, we, we made what we wasted the most time on <laughs> is the batteries right, that was on the floor. Right when you get into the room, there's a computer and it says you got to turn the computer on. And there's like a little symbol or like car battery, like uh, how you jump a car. Um and we could jumper cables, yeah. We couldn't find the battery, and it was sitting on the floor right next to the computer. We wasted a solid ten minutes on that. What made me so mad about that is that we had talked before we even walked in the room, and I was like, "Yo, there's a battery on the floor," and it wasn't in the floor in the first room. Yeah, you're but so then we walked scared. into the room, and the battery was right there on the floor, <laughs> and we walked around for ten minutes <laughs> with with the battery right where our foot was. After we had just had the conversation, we did, we did. I remember huh? you saying it to me, dude. Okay, we yeah, were doing like we were making the bar scary. Jack. Bro, no, this guy's talking the corner. Literally this nothing. No, bro, they scared. were standing there but, trembling. They were, they were the two in every horror video game that gets the jump scares and then disappear in the scene. You don't really know where they went, but you heard them. Yeah, scream. all I'm saying, I'm happy to take it from him. Coming from him, all these guys did was make jokes at the start that I'm not going to repeat on this podcast. <laughs> Uh, the main cause of what he's doing, he just made some outrageous jokes. He was laughing a little bit too hard, and that's. Oh <laughs> that's. A, I'm not gonna say no more, but you're talking a lot of shit uh, with someone who I could repeat some outrageous jokes right now. All right. <laughs> they did like the mood beforehand, though. It's all good. To be fair, one that's of the highlights in the some jokes. Yeah, it was just some jokes in the lobby. Like, I don't think there was any. I don't think anyone got upset by yeah. by anything that was said. Yeah, right. <laughs> the one of the highlights was Reed was. In, I thought. <laughs> what, you were born in Germany. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. What Let's, the hell? We need to clarify some context. So at this point, everyone knows what happened. I did not make a single joke mm -hmm. until until the jokes were already made. Yeah, but yeah. like, okay, I definitely piled on. Did you add on to the joke? Oh no, no, no. <laughs> Eddie's. Am instigating. I denying any of that? I don't think I am. No, yeah, I'm just, we're, I'm just we're cool. We're cool. This scenario. Yeah. There was nothing bad whatsoever. It was all jokes and laughs. The best thing was when Reed in the lobby just got scared out of nowhere. So we're in the lobby, we're waiting to go oh, into the yeah. game. Oh my and god! No, this scared the crap out of me. As I well. was talking. I'm <laughs> reacting. <laughs> Are you guys are telling the same Bro, story? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on your ass when we're in there. I swear to God. I'm watching your monitor only. <laughs> I was saying, Don't think we forgot about we, that. Group. We went in, bro, and Reed was someone. Some dude came, like an employee, like walked past us, like ran into the room to get him, and Reed, like almost like he full freaked out. And he like jumped the other way, and he had like his fist out, and everyone just started laughing. Like, what the hell are you doing? It was like. It was at like the pregame. It wasn't even like the, it was like yeah. just the lobby. It, yeah, that was, it was hilarious. The pregame lobby. Yeah, we were in the pregame <laughs> no, lobby. No, literally, we weren't even in the game, and this guy's like freaking out. Can you explain um, the employee part? Like, are they dressed up? Or yeah. 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 He had a mask on and like blood. Like, I don't know. He had like a. He had like fake scrapes. He just looked on like he'd neck, be like, like he yeah. looked like he'd gone really, through it. Yeah. And he was walking like really creepy, like weird. Yeah. And he gave someone. He was a like, note. he was like, like, like and his eye bags were like, he had purple, like from his, like, yeah, all around his eyes. And he was just like, what, like he was like, and it was like, it also like doesn't help. Like he looked like really skinny and freaky. I just can't explain. It. Like he just looked like that's just a dig at him. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 like no, like no, like, no, like it, no, like it suits the, like you know what I mean. Like he looked like he made yeah, like it just suits it. Yeah, it does. The it funniest was a lot of part fun. was when 
he ran out from the room for the first time and everyone got oh, so yeah. 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 I dude, think I grabbed dude, Eddie. Because I typed in the code on the admin door and it opened the door and he just like flew yeah. out. And Ed, it, like, like we were all piled up around this little yeah. admin box, like putting some wires together. And then the oh, door yeah, started the to slowly open and we're all like backing <laughs> job, up, bro, holding each other. But like there were so a couple bad. moments where it felt like we were That's in right. a scary movie. Like, oh, definitely. Yeah. And I think, I think what made like the moments that made me the most scared was other people getting scared. Exactly. Yeah. That's our role. That was the whole time <laughs> that we were acting scared. So it made you more scared. Like I had the straightest face and I was jumping over people and he ran out. Like I was, oh, yeah? I was staying away from him. That yeah, shit was so <laughs> scary. He, was, he was freaky. I think I grabbed onto like as soon as the guy came, I think I gripped Eddie by the jumper and I just like I put him in front of me. <laughs> okay, do you remember? I, I think it was him or Reed that I actually had by like uh, like the shoulders. I, like I was strangling them. It was a lot of fun. And then tomorrow we have a Royals game, which you guys have never been to a baseball game. I don't I know assume, how the sport I works. I've never right? even watched a football. Don't know how game. the sport works at all. Uh, you, no, you pitch a ball and you hit it and you try to get the home. Like, if I, if I say, you know, where is shortstop? Like, who plays shortstop? No idea. I don't know that in depth. I just know, like, you there's a pitcher and a batter. You, like, smack it and you try and run around the bases. And Wii so Sports. Yeah. Wii Sports. You smack it and yeah. then you try to run around the four bases. That's like, the gist. Well, you guys know cricket. Yeah. yeah. Cricket is a lot different, cricket though. Is no, no, I'm not. I'm not I is our just sport. I was just, yeah, I was just, I was just clarifying. What? Uh, it's both. I think... Uh, I think cricket's probably cricket's cricket, probably more popular than cricket's rugby. probably our best sport. We're like one in the world too. You know, we're crazy at cricket. I think we're pretty good at rugby as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah not bad. Rugby, r- rugby is yeah, lit. Are the who's New Zealand? Yeah, I was about to say New Zealand. The New that's, Zealand. That's rugby union, rugby league. Like, it's like the NFL. Like, no one else plays it. Like, only Americans pretty much play it. But like rugby league, like only Australians play it. Well, we're talking about global sports and and how they're different in different continents and countries. Like, you guys saw that the esports are going to be at the Olympics. Mm. That is, I, I don't know. Some people feel very like on and like off about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. esports because legitimately two of the games that are included have scenes. I think. Not even, I don't think. Is it actually even, like? Is it like sporting games? On it's like it's like we it's like we tennis. Right, right. I, I'm not going to say at anything, but that's. Like, what are you going to do? Put CS at the Olympics? Right. Like, no, but I mean, would Rocket League not be the perfect Olympic sport? Rocket League would have been incredible, and I think it's, I, 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 whoever is on the Olympic committee, you're an idiot. Like, <laughs> let's just be real, because like, what are you, what could you possibly be thinking when you're putting? You might as well put like pinball in the Olympics. Yeah, like, that's about as at least pinball people play it. The the sports that they put in the Olympic or the the video games they put aren't even video games that people play. There's no player it base. Makes no for sense. Like there's there's not even there's not even a player base. To have people play in the Olympics for it, like yeah, that's what I was saying. What's going on? I was saying that to Kingston and Matt. I was like, you could start grinding one of those games and become an Olympic champion because <laughs> nobody's playing them right now. So if you start grinding, like you, I don't know, it's like it's the, kind of nuts. The bow, the, bow, the tap bow game. <laughs> yeah, it's t- it's called tic tac bow, and it's like a mobile game. No, but like seriously, I think the person that decided that deserves at least some flack. It's not personal. But it's yeah. professional. It's I mean, professionally, wh- wh- you're an idiot. Hopefully, I'm just hoping that like this is a start of something that you know, in in eight years or twelve years from now, we can have a decent like an actual esports at the Olympics. You That'd know what I mean? Really cool. this, this guy hates the Olympics so much, bro. He was moving his mic, like, like he was standing up, like bashing his mic. Racing could be dope. I like want it to move. I want no, but you're gonna say into it. You're like you're like I pushing think, it and shit. I think CS could be a good one. Like on, it's like not Olympic at all, but I feel like an Olympic CS champion would be like a big. thing. I mean, it'd be cool, but CS is one shooting people and two terrorists versus counter terrorists, which I think they are changing in CS too, aren't they? Really? I haven't uh, seen it. It's it's about ter- CS too, yeah. They want it to be in high schools and colleges and. That's stuff. like the whole theme, though. Yeah. Well, no, it's not the whole theme. The but whole theme is shooting people. No, but like, it has to be terrorists, counter terrorists. It could be people. But I feel. Do you reckon not like lose like audience for that or something? Or no, no, not at all, dude. How it can well, make it can gr- it can make what the would game it be? What would the names be? Just attackers and defenders. But that's yeah, like, yeah. That's like Valorant. You probably have to do like saying like, I don't know. You don't want to attackers and defenders. I don't, I don't think it's that deep. Like it's not gonna. It's not, it's not gonna take. I don't anymore. know. Plus, yeah. I don't think anyone like. I don't think anybody that currently plays CS is going to be upset that it makes it more accessible. To make their game even bigger than it already is. Yeah. True. Uh, yeah, crazy, that's probably you know? game popularity because all the people. Oh, it's, dude, it's going to. I mean, you you currently can't put it in high school leagues. I think some college leagues have it, but it, like you have to get it approved and like it has to go through a process. Like, how much easier would it be if it was just attackers and defenders to get a game like CS approved? It'd be yeah. night and day different. So we we are like right on a topic that I was going to bring up anyways, but it's like, 
what needs to happen to Rocket League to make it the biggest esport in the world? Because uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's it, so from your guys' perspective. Obviously, you guys consume probably ninety nine percent Rocket League compared to other esports. Whereas I have a, a perspective that I grew up on Call of Duty, but then you know we've been in Valorant, Rainbow Six, COD, Rocket League. Like I've watched and consumed a lot of different esports. Not not saying you guys haven't, but. Um, like, in my opinion, Rocket League is the game that can be the biggest esport in the world in five to ten years from now because it's so easy to watch. Um, you, when I tell my parents about what I do, I can show them Rocket League and they instantly understand what's going on versus, like, they don't know what's going on in Hardpoint or S&D or, or Valorant or whatever. So it's like, what what needs to happen? Like, what are the next steps to get to that point? It's The one thing with Rocket League I noticed is it's one of those games that's easy to watch, but, like, one thing I don't really know how to change is Picking it up is a lot harder. Like, you can't For pick sure. up Rocket League and just, like, uh, it takes, like, a good, I would say at least, like, a month to at least, like, start to learn, like, anything in the game. So, it's, like, hard. But it's, like, you're not going to, like, someone pick up the controller once and not going to be able to do, like, the shit they see. Oh, yeah. Like, in COD, it's, like, you grab a gun, right-click, you shoot. You don't need to, like, Rocket League, to drive, you have to click a certain button. To go up the wall, you have to click another set of buttons. To jump is a whole other set of buttons. And then there's, like, the physics, like, the gravity, like, what way you're boosting. It's a lot more, like muscle memory i feel like in compared to like cod it's like there's skill in there but it's a lot easier to be like build a floor but i think that's why you can compare rocket rocket league is almost more comparable to traditional sports than it is other esports because like we watch the chiefs on uh play football every sunday it's not like okay well we can't go out and do what they do but we can go to the park and have fun and play football still like you know what i mean so i don't know i just i just think it's so you know like as someone who's never really been into League of Legends, and I can't really tell what's going on, yeah. it's like, how is that pulling five million viewers? And why can't we do that for our sports? so well. I mean, it's also where the game is popular. Like yeah. League of Legends and the, and the biggest esports in the world are popular in the biggest markets all over the world. Like, Rocket League is hardly a thing in Asia, which is where video games are so massively dominant. And then... With that dominance in those regions, you can make the game way bigger. Like, the companies can be bigger. I mean, Psyonix as a company is not very big. Like, they do not have many employees, you know. Like, we personally know the people that work in the esports scene. Like, you could not possibly know the people that work in Riot or, like, in other games like that. Um, but, and also, to talk about real quick, like, what is Rocket League missing is the casual aspect of Rocket League is non-existent. You cannot hop on Rocket League and casually just lose every game. It's just not that fun, right? It needs something that isn't winning or losing. It needs something where you can learn how to use your car that doesn't mean putting the ball in a net, even though that is the core of the game because that's not really that important. It's fun to just use a car with a controller. Like, a racing thing would be cool to have in Rocket League. A hide-and-seek mode. Like, I, I, I personally play a lot of the custom maps in the game, and let me tell you, it is ten times more fun than the game itself. That's because after so many hours of trying to get good at a solely muscle memory based game it gets boring and so many people quit and it's hard so put something in the game that is creative that is fun and also forces people to get better at the game than just hitting the ball against other people trying to beat you yeah i also yeah. think like th th that's good but like what happens after like the month or so where people get bored of like the hide and seek like say for example like someone's playing hide and seek and you play with your friends for like a month it's kind of like any like, do you know what, like, party games are? Yeah. It's like if you play party games, you get bored of a month. Like, I feel like Rocket League needs to add something, like... I, I like, genuinely don't know what they can add, but they need to add something that sustains... I feel like your idea would be good for, like, a first month. It's kind of like the free-to-play thing. It had a really short period where we had, like, our God knows how many people playing the game. But then after, people, like, kind of, you know, kind of died out a bit, and then we went back down to our normal... The Epic Games thing was really good. As soon as we got with Epic Games, our Rocket League, like, increased tenfold prize yeah. pool popularity. That was, like... I think it's more of like if they collaborate with some sort of soccer team, I feel like it could be like because I feel like they have in the past they had PSG Barcelona. That Wolves. might have helped, but like what? Well, like I never like oh, I saw the decals and stuff. I guess, but maybe like I don't know if they can just get like some sort of like a next big company or something. Because I feel like that Epic Game thing was like the biggest thing Rocket League's ever had. The workshops would be good, but I feel like it'd be the free to play all over again. Well. People, the thing that, about, the thing about people can though, create them. People, yeah, exactly. People oh, okay, can, that's like, different then. Like and if, that, if, it was, if there was a creative mode, like, sure, people might be bored of hide-and-seek after a month, but there, you will, can make there your will, own. will be countless people creating other maps and new maps. Yeah, that is true. I just always feel that we need, like, some sort of, like, in terms of, like, exposure, we need something to get out there. Like, it's either, like, 
some sort of other company. Like, we could probably, like, partner with a car, soccer. Like, there's so many things Rocket League I feel like could partner with, but I feel like it'd be... They have. They have Lambo, McLaren. They have all car sponsors, and it still doesn't, like... Yeah, well, because uh, if you're a McLaren fan, why would you care that McLaren's in yeah. the game? One thing would be cool, maybe it's, like, partnering with s- soccer stadiums. Like, imagine the Bernabeu, like, where Real Madrid plays in Rocket League for, um, like, a week. I don't know. I don't know, like... With Real Madrid. It's more that, like that would be cool, but yeah, I don't like know at, how many people that brings to the game. At like an arena or something, you could just have like I don't know. It's like, like you know how like a like games or some shit. They got like the spray paint on the ground. They got like a symbol of like a I don't know like Kansas City Chiefs or something. They'll have like a symbol of one of their sponsors on the ground. Something like that for Rocket League. Even something yeah. simple. They just I don't know. It's dude. I, just I don't. Thought, I just thought in my head what. Like sprays in Valorant and CS. What if there was like a honking feature, but when you honked, you like put a sp- like a, a spray paint on the ground? Like imagine like BMing people with like a yeah. Because oh. right now the only way to BM is is quick chat. That's, that's, pretty, imagine cool. there's like, there's that's like pretty. That's pretty good though. It, pretty, it is. Like, it can be. Yeah. Oh, it's great. I mean, come on now. It's awesome. well, you could add like yeah. a, you could probably add like an email button. Probably like if you score or something. After you could probably like use like the arrow keys or like something. a boogie bomb in, in Fortnite. Could, that, that, just like <laughs> that could very easily be added. I don't think that's like a hard thing, but I don't Not know. In it's this just game, it could be added in UE5, and that's the other problem holding Rocket League back is like you hop on Rocket League, you're playing a game built on an engine that is 15 years old. Can you believe that? 15 years old. I think it actually might be older than that. I think it might be like 17 so or 18 two th- years old. 2008. That is 2005, older than you someone? guys. So what happens if we get Unreal? This is what I think. I know Unreal Engine's going to make the game smoother, less buggy and all that. But like... I, I can tell you a lot about the features. Really? Like what... Like the workshops, I get all that. But like how much is like... Here, I'll, let me give you a couple. Well, have, I, oh, before you dive into yeah, that, because yeah, I can ahead. tell you have a lot to say. Like have you seen the recent updates to Fortnite? Like you can do anything in Fortnite now. Like... There, people are creating RPG games in Fortnite. They're creating story mode games. They're creating horror games. Anything in Fortnite. I mean, yeah, like, but how can you like how could you create a horror game in Rocket League? Like, what a Fennec jumps out at you? Like, I just, no, he's not. He's not <laughs> saying no, 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 no. that. He's like, it, you're thinking too small. When we say that in Fortnite they're making a horror game, you're not loading crea- into Fortnite. You're loading into a. Horror so I get game Rocket Not Fortnite so at all. Rocket League, you can make things that aren't Rocket League at all. But would that? increase the audience of like the RLCS and shit was if people are just playing like I don't know not horror games but like hide and seek or some shit surely like the people that play hide and seek could not care less about RLCS games like if you want to play you can play that I makes mean, sense another thing that killed the game is trading with keys and gambling like buying keys and opening crates like I can I get why they took it away but that was a big part of the game like a lot of my casual friends that I like first played the game with they turned into traders because they weren't good at the game and then when trading got taken away, they all stopped playing because you just can't, you can't trade and you can't like <coughs> gamble, I guess. Yeah. Which is like addicting. It's bad, Why but it was great. Because it's, it, it's a kid game and they don't like kids There's getting. literally gambling in an E for everyone game. So. Yeah, they don't like Yeah, but like that gets game. more, like if that gets you more audience, like. I mean. It, I mean, what kind of audience though? Yeah. That's what I mean. Like any, like I did, like Rocket League's not like, it's definitely not like a dead. I think Rocket League's what, like tier two. Apparently, some people think we're coming close to a tier one, but like, I don't really. I would consider Rocket League a tier top, one, but I would not even. Tier. I would not even put Rocket League in the conversation. Dude, do you it's, know what the tier ones look like? No, I know, but it's so interesting our different like, perspectives because I'll tell like you that, I played like I grew up watching Call of Duty, and obviously yeah. you did too, and it's like Black Ops Two is the golden era, whatever, and it's just like to see COD fall off, and I'm now we're comparing it to like Valorant and Rocket League, whatever. I think Rocket League is like on the cusp of tier one. I think Rocket League yeah, I mean, it's, it's on the cusp, it's top of tier I, two. I don't even think that. I, I genuinely don't think that there is an existing argument to put it in tier one because how could you possibly like League is tier yeah, one, CS yeah. is tier one. Like, yeah. have you those seen games the when they're majors? Have you the seen Val- like the, Valorant is tier one? Yeah. Have you seen like the productions and like the stage? It's unbelievable. And how many audience? It's it's, un- it's unrivaled the Valorant like it's, productions. It's, but the problem with Rocket League esports is that in order to get to that kind of stature, you need the league to be franchised because you can't have le- you can't have a franchise league without land leagues because you couldn't have Australian teams playing from Australia, you couldn't have Sam teams playing the EU teams in the league, right? But you can't have a land league with fifteen year olds because they're in school. What are you gonna do? Make an E for everyone game, eighteen plus? Like, how do you bridge that gap? Yeah. And th- at the same time, like in terms of Rocket League being tier one or not. The tier one esports hit like 500k minimum, and have watch parties hitting like 40k, 50k, 60k with their creators. 
Rocket League doesn't even have partnerships to increase the views. They won't even give creators drops on their channels to help creators grow the game. It, 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 it's so backwards. Like, I mean, also, like, OCE doesn't even appear on the Rocket League channel. You have to find that Rocket channel. League, I see. It's on, yeah, I it's on, on Rocket League OCE. What sense does that make? Rocket League Sam has its own channel. What sense does that make? Just the only reason they do it, I think, is because if the numbers are lower, Rocket League can't pitch to, to Lamborghini, to McLaren, to Verizon to sponsor their uh, – to sponsor the regionals. It's also the reason why NA is the only region that really actually gets sponsored tournaments. EU doesn't even get sponsored tournaments because the orgs that exist in NA aren't even, a, or in EU, aren't even as popular in terms of, like, pop culture or, or socials or any of that. I do think Rocket League, like, lands at the Rocket League lands, how many viewers do we pull on Twitch at, like, the lands? I'm pretty sure it's, like, a bit, a bit under 100K, I'd say. I mean, it was really rough at Rotterdam. You know why? Because the timing... Yeah, it was I timing swear, was I swear, timing. world it was, was huge. 4 a.m. because I watched party. Yeah. It was atrocious. I was like the only person alive during those <laughs> hours. What about what about? I swear, world was like huge. It was. I think it was close to like 300k. Yeah, I would say like yeah, but that's, that, though, that's also the world. Championship. That's world. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the best we've ever had. Like that is like last world championship was not like that is like very good improvement. I was gonna say one of the things that I think Rocket League esports does incredibly well compared to you know, the Call of Duties or whatever is like the LAN experience, at least from a fan perspective, like you don't have games going for 12 hours a day or more. So it's like you get, actually get to enjoy Wait, your like evenings. Yeah, you get to hang out and with people where, where it's like we've been to Halo events, COD events, whatever. You have games going on 12 hours a day. It's like you don't have time to do anything else and hang out with people. So It is also um, Carmine Corp are like decently, like it's like they're pretty big. Like that Komodo guy pulls like 60K viewers at Rotterdam. And that's like... For, for like he's literally a watch party person. And he's pulling so many. I feel like Rocket League has good orgs, but I don't know. Just like it doesn't bring as much attention as I thought to. Like we have teams like G Two, Phase, Liquid, like Gen G. We have so many of these big orgs. It seems like you know I haven't seen like there's a few Gen G fans, but like when Carmine joined Rocket League, there was like a swarm of these like you know French people. They're just coming like they they love Vitira. They're coming for it. And then Gen G, it's like I see a couple of people on Twitter, but it's, it's not like. As well, like G2 and stuff, these big orgs, I would imagine that, like, like a Valorant and shit that have, like, fucking, like, you know, hordes of people yeah. coming. But, like, Rocket League, I don't see, like, a swarm of Gen G people, a swarm of FaZe people. I mean, Carmine have their own section at land. Like, they literally have, like, a, yeah, a, a box. They bought it out, yeah? Of, I, I don't know, but they just, they must they did, have. Yeah. Because that, they just have Carmine fans all screaming there. But these guys are in, these guys are the most passionate people I've ever seen. It's like, this Kometo guy, he's just with, there with his computer and his friend. Bunch of Carmine people behind him, and they all just love Vatira. That they live for him. Like these people, like I don't know. I don't know how to get more of that with the other orgs. Like I'd love to see like G two fans like that for Jane apps or like I don't know who's another like Phase. Phase should have like God knows how many. But they should be bigger. Well, the other the other problem that Rocket League has is that the players themselves. No offense, guys, but very few of them do content and put themselves out there in a way that actually shows their personality. Because the kind of, like, methodology of Rocket League content became to follow Squishy Muffins because that is what gets the views because that is what people are used to on YouTube. Arsenal, though, kind of broke that a little bit. But the fact that I can mention the only people that do it, Rettles, like, I could, I could, I think, if you gave me, like, five minutes, name every single Rocket League pro, that creates content. And that's not going to grow your game. And when you have the biggest people in the game, no offense, I'm going to harp on Squishy a little bit here, but when the biggest personalities in your game barely interact with their community, the other people in the community, the other pros, the other anybody in the community, it's not going to grow your game. In other games, you have people actually like caring about the community and creating fun content. But it's also difficult because Rocket League players are young and in puberty and all of that, and it's very difficult to put yourself out there in yeah. that way. Like, Arsenal didn't start content <coughs> until I think he was like 18 or 19. Like, you get a little bit more comfortable at that point. But if you're a 15-year-old godlike prodigy like Daniel or Vatira or any of that, like... Hunter. Yeah, Hunter. Like, <laughs> it's it's also difficult to create content in Rocket League because what is there to that's, do That's what Rocket I was going to say. It's like a full over. circle so moment. So, like, it's literally a circular motion of nothingness it's just going stale. anywhere outwards because there is nothing to look at. Like, yeah. if, you, if you don't play Rocket League, and you don't care about Rocket League, why would you want to sit there and watch a professional player not speak into the mic and play ranked if you don't play the game? Yeah, but what you could do is watch your favorite personality. Like, what if someone's a really big fan of Banana Head and Scrub and Banana Head and Scrub are duo streaming 
some creative map, like like a horror game in Rocket League. Like that is what brings a new person into the game because John was also mentioning that or like both of you guys are mentioning like it'd be really cool to see orgs have these fans watch Rocket League, but if you think about it, those orgs have fans of certain games that they themselves play. I don't want to watch the boring. They yeah. don't want to watch someone sit on stream. Like I have to admit like no offense to the Rocket League professionals, but a lot of streams are kind of just like, yeah, I'm playing ranked. And it's just like a few words. Like some guy reads his chat like, I that's not their fault though. It's a circle again. Exactly. It's, like, yeah, it's, it's boring to just sit there and play ranked yeah. day in and day out. I get it's boring, but people like there are people like I like to watch like Arsenal. Justin's become a lot more like enjoyable to watch. Like some like battles. I can like some people. There are definitely things. I get the game stale, but there are definitely things like someone for example like Dries. When I watch that guy stream, I go to sleep. Like he actually just like hates everyone and does not talk once. I was gonna say one small thing that like a lot of streamer, a lot of That's pros bad. could do is like before the. I'll see somebody, like, it could be any pro player, they tweet out their stream link, and I click on it, and they're already mid-ranked game at the start of their stream. Like, bro. They didn't bring an audience in. Turn on your camera and talk to your chat for 20 minutes before exactly. you start playing. And then in exactly. between games, don't just queue again immediately. Like, turn Watching on your camera you. for 10 minutes in between each game. You know what I mean? Really, like, if some people, like, Lethemia literally just grows his channel from workshops. That guy's one of the biggest... Someone I look up to, like, a lot as a content creator, Sunless Khan, that guy has... Yeah. Yeah, Rocket League. He has made it like, like he does things outside of Rocket League, which obviously he's not a pro player. But I feel like a pro player could go like, I don't know, like vlog some of your lands, do something like a lot of these. Like when I was a kid, I wanted to see like you know into like these pros' lives. I wanted to see like what like what the, like a pro's life is like, like what you do. Like you're just a normal person, you're a freak. Like I like to watch that shit when I was a kid, and it's like I, I think a lot of kids are like that. They like to see the human side to Absolutely. what I think is like. The pro who they like is just assumed to be a robot who's created to play Rocket League. It's yeah. like if they produced more like, you know, hey, I'm like not my gamer tag, I'm a real person, the kids would be like, Oh yeah, like, you know, I can look up to this guy as like more of a role. So model. what you're saying is you're gonna vlog at San Diego. I probably should. If we <laughs> But this is the problem is that it's not crazy that he's not going to because he's seventeen years old. You're right. Every single person that we grew up watching was not seventeen years old yeah. vlogging and creating I do content. once I, once I finish school I will start like YouTube and all that, but like right now I'm like doing this in school is like No, very, being a pro is a full time job, being in school is a full time job. So yeah, adding I, yeah, you know, I think adding once more I finish tours. this, but um we did say if we make top four he's before the, the Sunday he's shave his head and his beard, so he's gonna be an egg. I don't know. If, I don't know if I might. Okay. You're getting dreads. Oh, I'll sh I'll shave my head. He, so he's getting scrub with dreads, well, I bro. I also didn't agree with to help him get top four if they're already top eight. <laughs> so if we get, oh, we're good. We're good here. If we if we ever go top four, I would all rock up and say just eggs. Just the, egg. the next day, we'll, we'll all the pioneers will be rock egg. up the next day. As <laughs> Show up as the eggs every in the single crowd. pioneers. As soon, if we win that game, all the pioneers. The Same eggs. exact. Everybody's wearing the pro kit, jumpsuit, ball head. Yeah, no, just like a onesie, thing. not even like the pro. Just just. Skin tight suit, but you know, I don't know. There are like, I get Rocket League sale, but a lot of the people in the community are just really like boring. Like I'm not like, look, I'm not like the most entertaining person on my stream as well. Like I haven't really gotten to the gist of it yet. But like some people streams, I literally watch. They play no mic and they just don't respond to any of their chat. Yeah. And they're pulling like good viewers, like 500 to 1,000. And I'm like, why wouldn't you try to like grow your audience? Like, play another game, play some workshops, like have a laugh. Like usually, if you play with a mate, people enjoy that. Like. The amount of times I've like watched someone play with their mate and they're just laughing and it kind of makes you feel like, oh, it's just like it's entertaining to watch. But if you're just watching some like, I don't know, like squishy muffins play ranked and like just sit there and sound so depressed, it's like he has such a good following and he could do so much more. Yeah. That's like something like- He could do so good for everyone else too. It's like he could direct his audience to people that are also doing good for the game, but he decides to literally speak to nobody. <laughs> I, I think that I'm friends with quite a few people in Rocket League. Mm. Never once have I ever met somebody that is friends with Squishy. Sunless Khan is like such a like, that guy is like made Rocket League. So like that's why the two goats of Rocket League content are Musty and Sunless. And they don't even just sit there and play rank. They do creative things. Like Sunless does like his, I don't know, he does like the 13 year old. Shit. And well, like Musty does other things. Like, I don't know, they do all so I many know, different I put, things. I put, Leth, I put Leth actually in there. Like yeah, I, there's so many. Like I don't those think three. that you can mention, because if you mention Musty, I love Musty, but without the Musty flick, like, in terms of his innovation for content, it really isn't there. But his, his like, how do I word it? Like, Sorry, he, no. he appeals to the younger audience of Rocket League so much. And that does thing. make him a goat. Because he 
legitimately was like carrying free to play content. Yeah. But like the other circular problem of Rocket League is that our greatest content creators are unbelievable content creators. Yeah. There's no room if you want to be like a daily mm. uploader on YouTube because nobody wants to watch you, bro. They want to they want to see a waiting movie. They want to see a documentary. Yep. Sunless. They want to see a it's documentary. It's the same by same exact conversation I have with Jewel and Cronovi all the time. It's like they both want to upload, but it's like, no what do they upload besides ranked? You Literally, know I mean? if you are not making a documentary, nobody cares. That's what the separates. I think Lethemy is like a great content creator, but the one thing that separates like Musty and him, like Musty and Sunless from Lethemy, is they, they bring Rocket League into real life and they, they make it work so well. Like yeah. you wouldn't think like, I don't know, like if I had my friend, like some, like the most recent Sonless Khan video that's not a Rocket League video would probably slap. Like, yeah. Dude, I was in one of the Rocket League IRL videos. Ah, but we get it, we get it. Right, we get it, we get it. Like, you didn't, <laughs> Yo, you did not have to uh, say that. Slight at flex. All. Uh, I actually did uh, participate in the Rocket League I IRL video. So I wish Hunter was here right now. Yeah. But don't boost his guys' ego like, anymore. They, they're don't apparently boost, not, boost his ego. They're not that big of a fan of Leth. So no, I, I, I love Leth. Oh, Leth is a goat nah, of Rocket League. I used to, when he used to, he Like Doug Sensor Martin is the goat of What team did he used to play for? He is. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the goat list of COD is Scump. Isn't Scump the optimist? Doug Sensor Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I think we're good. Right? Yeah, I, I was going to say, I was going to say, this is, I just want to say, obviously, uh, we were harping on the game a little bit, but it comes from a place of passion, like, we all want Rocket League to succeed. We all want it to be one of the biggest esports in the world, and that's why we have the passionate conversation that we do. But and, th and this is something that we could obviously probably talk about for hours. But you guys got to practice. We got other content to shoot. So um, yeah, do you guys have anything else to say before we wrap it up? That flex was so cringe from you. <laughs> we love you guys. We're talking it was about a solid IRL flex. videos, it was a so and I was in one of the biggest um, IRL videos. I'm just in it's not that crazy with flex. Video. I think, was, like, I think it was no. I think they take Rocket League to IRL really, like really well. I didn't oh, ask yeah, if you were in the video. I was in. But I didn't ask. I did I didn't ask if you were in the video. I didn't care that you asked. <laughs> but <laughs> why are you telling me then if but I didn't yeah, ask? Because it directly relates to exactly what but you're talking about. And I don't directly, think no one that. cares. But like straight up. Thank you all for watching this episode of the Main Story Podcast. We will see you all in the next one. I didn't want to know. Exactly, you didn't know, so it wasn't even a flex. Like it was the camera cut. Huh? Did the camera cut? It didn't cut, but it, oh, will, it, will, it will cut. cut. Dude, yeah. like, I don't know. It was information <laughs> that you actually didn't know. If it's something that I've talked well, about multiple times.